Hello everybody, welcome to Speakeasy. I'm Zach. I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. Apparently I'm holding Steve's hand. I don't know about this. It's got French, French staves in it. French staves? French so you don't want to drink it? Well, you'd be missing out if you didn't. <clears throat> it smells good. Man, you gotta take an actual sip before you start getting all technical with it. Take the Momo approach and bang her on the first date, then find out if she's a good girl. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, speaking of, what do he, he's up to? Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, if you didn't gather, we're doing a Maker's 46 whiskey review. This is one I've been really, really looking forward to because when we did Maker's Mark, we read about Maker's 46 and it sounded really cool. Sorry, I like playing with the wax. You gonna talk? Oh, I, I just thought you were still talking with pause because I was looking at you funny. Um, yeah, this is the first, I don't know if it was the first released in their wood finish series, finishing series, but it says first, so wait for that. So it was created by Bill Samuels Jr. Uh, to uh, amplify all the flavors he really liked about uh, regular Maker's Mark. So they took a uh, fully matured, cash strength, Maker's Mark, and then they added uh, 10 seared virgin oak staves into the barrel and then uh, finished it for nine weeks. How do you get a non-virgin oak stave? One that's been used? Ah, oh, just curious. What did you do? I didn't do anything, I just, I was making a uh, virgin joke. Oh, okay. It hasn't been fucked yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, some, somebody's got some uh, serious pain tolerance, uh, or a lot of splinters, and personal problems. Probably a bit of both. French, man. <laughs> French people. <laughs> it's not all French staves, is it? It's just some of them are French. They insert them... Oh, I guess, yeah, they might have... See, what I thought was they, they took the staves and then stuck them into the whiskey. Mm -hmm. But they're probably pulling actual staves out of the barrel. Yeah, and there's ten of them okay. in the barrel. And they're all French? Yes. Okay. Seared virgin French oak. I swear I listen to him sometimes. Ah! What, what? the fuck? What, Willie? <laughs> So, and they still can't spell whiskey right. They can't. Look, Maker's Mark, uh, I don't know if you guys passed, like, third grade, but even my son can spell whiskey now. So, let's let's get to it. <laughs> whiskey spelled with an E, like America and freedom. Yes. Also, um, even if you want to argue about the countries that don't spell it with an E, this is bourbon. It's yes. made in America, you spell it with an E. However, this is uh, so different for a bourbon from anything I'm used to. I get like a like an almost grape or plum fruitiness on the nose that I don't normally notice. It's really strange for a bourbon to have that that extra fruitiness to it, because I'm sure it also has the regular flavors, but on, yeah, I, the, on the nose, I don't get those normal. Yeah, I, I can I can taste the regular, the, the, the makers, regular makers, um, but yeah, there, there definitely is something different. It's, I like it. I'm not, nice... I'm not sure how to pin down what it is, though. It's I just don't... really strange. You know what I bet it is? Hmm. I bet it's ten seared virgin French oak staves. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I know what makes the difference, but I don't know what I'd call the note. Do you have uh, uh, water in your fridge? Uh, like bottled water? Yeah. Maybe. I shall retort. Yeah, momentarily. Well, uh, while Elevator. I pour a glass of Maker's to compare. 
Okay, we're done with that. Oh, there's something back here. Alright. So. Uh, it's okay. Wow. The nose could not be much more different than it is. Oh man. Wow. Is this the regular? Yeah. It's a lot sweeter smelling. Well, two percent. The forty-six or the regular. The, the regular. Let's see what this did with a couple, a couple drops of water. I don't know whose water this was, but it was in the back, so. Mm, I get a, a much more like sugary, caramelized sweetness that makes me think of like a caramel apple on oh, that one, which is normal for a bourbon. But on this one, I get that weird plum note that just really throws me. It's like the one good thing I could say about Henry McKenna was I got banana out of it and I've never pulled that out of another bourbon. It's it's all wood. That's the extra. Is It, it is those French oak. Mm. It's all the wood. I'm getting it's the little the, wood notes. Yeah, I'm, uh, out of the uh, double oak Jim Beam. I'm mm. getting the same kind of... Mm. It's the, it's yeah, the same kind of feeling on, on the roof of your mouth and... It's like yeah. a, um, the extra new oak added into it. But this actually, to me, has a little more bite to it. Now it is 2% more alcohol. Like, I expected it to be smoother, but it actually has more bite to me than the regular. I had a little bit of water to mine, if you wanted to. Oh, good. Yeah, that is wood notes. That opened it up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's wood notes, and there's also a pepperiness to that one that isn't there. Which is interesting, because this, I would assume, is still a weeded bourbon. It's it's, it's the... It's, it's regular the, Maker's Mark, right? Yeah, yeah, they just start out with just regular fully matured cast strength, and then they add in their virgins. So they don't water it down until after they finish it? Yeah. Okay. Nothing against watered down whiskeys. I prefer to try everything at cast strength and water it myself. But um, I also think if when you have anything over like 41%, I would assume that the master distiller actually said, okay, this is what I think is going to be the sweet spot to get the best flavor for your buck out of this bottle. <coughs> yeah. So, but that's, I actually like the more bite that comes from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe that's, like, I like wild turkey better than some other bourbons, and a lot of, a lot of what a lot of people don't like about wild turkey is it's a lot more of a, an in-your-face whiskey. It's, it, wild turkey to me conjures up two images. One is that old school boxer, uh -huh. and the other is uh, Thomas Jane. That's the puncher? Yes. <laughs> Just knocking them back. <laughs> I think Kevin Nash came in and his whole day went to shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just had a, a really, really terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. <laughs> Why was Stanley flat? Uh, I don't know. Mm. Me neither. Okay, so also... There's... Mm, I know what it is. It's still an apple note, but it reminds me of those uh, soft gala apples. <laughs> As opposed to, like, uh, uh, your normal, like, red delicious apple that you get from bourbon. Hmm? Oh, I don't like uh, the, the texture... The... I don't like to actually eat the red delicious apples. I don't either. I like uh, the... Not the galas. The galas are fine. I don't mind those. Um, <clears throat> I like the gold ones. Well, my favorite are green. Green. Oh. Um, but because they're a little sour. Mm. Granny Smiths. Um, 
But no, there's a red apple that I really like that's not Gala apple. I can't remember what it's called now. Fuji? Fiji? Yes, those. Those are amazing. Those are my favorites of the red ones. And then, of course, green apples top them all for me. Especially if you can find, like, legit farm-grown green apples that are all about yay big. Those are amazing. Those are pie apples. <laughs> Dude, I would eat, like, four of those on the way to school back when I, st I stayed at uh, Williams mm -hmm. for a little while. Uh, his mom would get, like, a basket of them a week, and I would literally, like, eat that whole basket in two days <laughs> if I was left to my own devices. Man, you got your fiber. <laughs> well, you got to figure I was homeless up until I lived with William, too. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I do, I, I do really like this, for, this, this bourbon that we're reviewing. <clears throat> yeah, this actually is, um... <laughs> I would want to stack this against Eagle Rare and Blade and & Bow and see what I think. Yeah. Because it's... It's harsher, <clears throat> but it's also spicier. It's also more complex and interesting than regular Maker's Mark. That definitely it, it justifies the extra, like, five, ten bucks in price that it is. Oh, easily. It's definitely a bourbon I would I would uh, work in rotation with others. I, I could I could see putting <clears throat> that in with uh, the Devil's Cut. Yeah. Or the Black. For me, they're all being products. Maker's Maker's Mark has done a decent job of like winning me over. I still. Uh, I still like Wild Turkey better, but they're they're starting to elevate themselves to second as they give me more offerings that I like. Yeah. I'm really, really excited to try their cask strength. Turkey? Or Makers? Makers. I didn't know they had a cask. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, you did. What if that's what that little bottle was in my... Ooh, that would be nice to try, if so. Not that I didn't just say that. <clears throat> I just realized we're now kind of like ranting yeah, at each yeah, other. We, are, rather than, um, we should probably wrap this up quickly. I meant to set a timer for this review, too. Uh, Did you get through everything? Yeah. Okay. Um, I would actually give this a 10. This is uh, one of like four whiskeys this year. I'd give it a 10. Uh, nine and a half. It might just be because I got a little bit of acid reflux from all that stuff I wasn't supposed to eat that I did yesterday. But <laughs> So, glad to help. <laughs> yeah. We had a big Thanksgiving party at my house yesterday, so... Although by the time they see this... Because all that's going up in our, our uh, December are our best of. Uh -huh. So they won't see this till January. Well, that's alright. Happy, Happy New Year. Yeah! But uh, that just shows you how, how much we like to drink whiskey that we bought enough to shoot this far ahead. Oh yeah, um, I, meant, I always do a shout-out when this happens, but it doesn't happen very often. Uh, this was gifted to us to review, uh, it's more like Lent, I guess, by my uncle, uh, Jerry. So, uh, Jerry, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. I, 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 this isn't the Whiskey Vault, so I can't uh, Magnificent Bastard you, but <laughs> we'll figure something out. As that happens more, we'll have to figure something. But, uh, yeah, I am super happy that he let me try this, because I've never let myself justify the purchase, because I'm like, Maker's is perfectly good on its own. I'll just drink Makers. Now I can justify a purchase of this bottle to yeah. myself real easy. It, it's always nice if you can try it before you buy it. So. Yeah. Well, and that's like uh, Blade and Bow. Had I not been bombarded by like 60 whiskeys I wanted to try all at once, I probably wouldn't have bought that Blade and Bow. It was too expensive. But. Oh well. Anyway, till we see you again. Um. This got a 9.75, by the way. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. And we are the Dirt Road Men. Hey, everybody. If you like this video, uh, hit a like or dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, check us out over on Facebook, where we post every day.